What the hell are you doing out there, little boy? All right, so pitch black, not only due to the fact that it's a late lift, but also, is this the final daylight savings? The last one has finally kicked in. So, I mean, it was fucking pitch black at, you know, 5.30. So, 7.30 now, the gym closes at 9.30. More than enough time for a pretty solid leg day. So... I'm kind of starting to think that I might want to back off on at, at least hamstring volume. I'm starting to think that I might want to cut down from my sort of arbitrary eight sets to maybe kind of transition the style of these lifts to obviously doing hard sets and even mix of, you know, really heavy and then light and squeezing. But just call it by the time that I feel like I'm you know, pretty fully pumped. And, you know, to an extent, that is kind of a subjective thing. Like, you know, oh, am I really fully pumped? Oh, well, it looks like it. But I, I don't know. It feels pretty objective. It's like you know how good of a pump you can get. So you pretty much know when you're at peak pumpedness. I'm really starting to think that that might be a little bit of a solid cue that you've done enough. At least enough to, you know, fully stimulate whatever muscle you're targeting. So let's say I do, you know, three sets of laying leg curls. And then maybe two sets of RDLs. And they were hard sets. And then I feel like I was fully pumped. You know? And, like, I know that over the course of the next hypothetical three sets, I probably wouldn't get any more pumped. I'm starting to think that those extra three may just be kind of fluff work. So, to an extent, I do want to be open to trying new stuff. I do want to constantly, you know, be open to changing my technique. But in the same sense, I kind of have this uh, sort of, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, kind of subconscious decision making in my mind. It's like, okay, you've been doing eight sets for every workout for a while and you've been getting good results. Just keep doing that. Don't change it. You know, I think a, that holds a lot of people back in their training routines in terms of actually improving them. Because, you know, if something is giving you results and it is working or it has worked before, you know, if somebody, let's say they did a, they wrote out a workout split, they had a workout routine, they did it for three years, and over the course of that year zero to year three, they did make some pretty serious improvements, then... You know, that's three years of time where, in their mind, them doing that specific routine got them results. So even if it stops working, even if they kind of plateau and they aren't really getting any, you know, month-to-month -month improvements, they're still going to keep doing it just because in their mind, that is what works, you know? If somebody gets a jack doing CrossFit full body workouts, that's what he's going to say works. If somebody gets a jack doing, like, fucking... I mean, let's get as crazy as Mike Mentzer, you know, two lifts a week with like three or, you know, two sets, then he's going to say that works, right? So a lot of shit works, but what I'm really trying to say is don't get too attached to the routine that you're doing now. You know, always kind of be open to the idea that there is better ways to go about it. And, you know, just knowing that won't do you any good. You actually have to try new shit. So I think I'm going to do this quad day a little differently. And I'm basically going to go until, you know, satisfaction. I'll do as many sets of hamstrings as I need to get fully pumped, which historically has usually been around five or six. And then quads, I'll see. I'll see how that works out. Maybe, you know, two, three sets of leg extensions. And then let's say I do two sets of really good squats and, like, I really push it. Maybe that's enough. I think I'm going to try it like this for a little bit of time and see how it works out. So, unrelated to that, unrelated to that, if you've noticed, kind of my nose has been a little bit extra red, kind of been breaking out just a touch. I would not say that's purely diet related. Like, I've definitely been doing more, like, processed sweets and, like, dairy products, which, you know, I'd say if my main goal... <laughs> 
was to reduce um, sebum production. That's like the oil that kind of causes acne. Then I'd be a little bit more preoccupied with that. But really the only change is I stopped doing Accutane. You know, I've been doing that pretty much this whole year. So I kind of want to see what my level is at for a little bit. And if I can, well, if I start breaking out all over my shoulders and my back, then, you know, definitely gonna need some more time. But if it's just kind of in the face, you know, I think a three-step proactive will do me good. I gotta get back in that routine that I was doing for a while. But we'll see how that progresses. But I think you can predict my next statement. No matter what, that's not gonna fucking affect the pump. Right? So, just, uh, just clarifying that for any who is particularly curious. So. Oh, God, I forgot the beta alanine. Whatever. Will that affect the pump? Maybe. Beta alanine is more of a systemic supplement, like how creatine, it's not like you take creatine one day and you get the benefits from it then. It's all about having it fully built up in your system over time. So it's not like you take beta alanine and you get a systemic, like immediate improvement in your endurance, in your reps. It's kind of just a longer thing. So that will only affect the pump, maybe just a little, maybe barely a little. But, uh, yeah, enough chit chat. Let's, let's get started with freaking, uh, hamstrings. More than, yeah, laying hamstring curls, I can almost guarantee it. All right, so legs fully pumped, calves pumped, adductors stimulated. And yeah, I mean, I really, I've got a little bit of an itch in the back of my mind, actually now in the front of my mind, which is telling me, try doing your lift until you're fully pumped and then call it there. I've kind of been thinking that for a while, but I haven't really wanted to implement it or try it just because of what I was saying in the car earlier, how you can kind of get locked into a routine because it's worked for, you know, a little bit of time. So you know that it has the capability of working. It's hard to, it's hard to leave. It's hard to change if what you've been doing has been giving you some results. But I think the enlightened lifter is capable of trying new shit for at least a month and determining whether or not it's legit or bullshit. Nice little, uh, nice little rhyme for you. But yeah, so I think the foreseeable lifts are gonna look similar to how they've looked before. I'm still going to kind of do lifts by feel. I'm going to pick movements based on what I think is going to be good. But let's say tomorrow when I do chest, instead of just doing, okay, I've got three sets of chest. Oh, no, no. I've got three sets of incline bench. Okay, now I want to do a set of incline smith. Okay, now I'll do two sets of cable press. Okay, that means I have two more sets left. Let's just do, you know, some pec flies. Instead of doing that, I'm going to do, like, well, I could probably imagine this happening, maybe, you know, two, three sets of incline bench, feel pretty good, and then maybe do uh, two sets of cable press, and then, I mean, let's say after those two sets of cable press, if I feel like my chest is fully pumped, then I think doing another two sets of pec flies may not really do much for me. I feel like that might just be extra fluff work, which I don't really benefit from so if I'm fully pumped and I feel like it was coupled with a solid amount of you know working sets like I want to get to the point where I just know when to end the lift but let's say I had a pretty solid chest pump going after two sets of chest I think I'd still kind of be inclined to do at least a few more just because two sets that doesn't seem like enough but you know who knows maybe I need to fight that little internal you know, ideology. Hey, man. Well, if I'm fully pumped to two sets and they were good sets, should I fucking leave? I don't know. You know that's uh, that's kind of how crazy I'm trying to think about it right now. But no, I can foresee probably around four or five range for the next little bit, and I'll see. I'll see what happens. I will see what freaking happens. So, this change from going from my normal eight to potentially a little bit lower. I'm really just trying to trim the fat. I'm trying to trim the fat. Because let's say I do, you know, let's say I were to have done four more sets of leg extensions after that last set today. You know, 
I definitely would have done a little bit of extra, you know, damage, and my quads would be a little bit more fatigued. But would they grow from that more than just calling it right there when I felt like I was fully pumped? You know, I'm not so freaking sure anymore. So, main idea. If you're, I mean, if you're a fucking beginner, just lock in with some kind of routine. You know, maybe, I, I don't know, just look it up. Watch a Jeff Nippard workout split tutorial video. Pick that, just get training experience. You know, I feel like a lot of the shit that I've been saying today, this is like way down the road. Or at least maybe a couple of years down the road. I don't know. Don't let me don't let me limit you in terms of your development. But if you're still within your first year or two of lifting, uh, I don't think that you're gonna get much more out of trying to like perfectly optimize your routine. Like I don't think you should be putting so much mental energy into like Okay, well, what split is the best? Okay, wait, so should I do six sets for biceps or should I do ten? Like, I don't think putting a ton of your effort and energy and thought process into that aspect of this whole little setup of muscle growth, I don't think it's really going to do you very good. You should probably focus more so on just, you know, lock into a routine. You know, do push-pull legs for a couple of months, do the Arnold split, do whatever. You know, maybe eight to... 12 working sets, get a pump, get stronger, progressive overload, get comfortable doing, you know, bench, get your form reasonably correct, right? Just training experience is the number one thing benefiting, you know, early stage lifters. And then, you know, as you become more and more experienced, you're going to want to kind of pinpoint your routine to your own specific build. And you're not going to be able to do that without training experience. So don't feel like you're missing out if you're not like thinking the exact shit that I'm thinking right now. Like if you've got a routine where you've been doing some leg extensions, some leg press, some squats, hamstring curls, RDLs, you've been doing 10 sets for hamstrings, 10 for quads, and it's been working for you, then that routine has been working for you, right? Keep pushing it, go hard, stick to it. And then over time, you know, think of new ways to kind of improve it. But don't just jump the gun to try and, you know, do some fancy shit just because your favorite so-and-so dude is doing it, you know. Because if you can't stick to a routine for at least a couple of months, then you know, making changes to your split, making changes to your training style, it's really not going to do you any good. I'm not going to notice any difference... I mean, I might feel a little bit less fatigued overall over the next couple of weeks just because I'm not doing so much volume. Maybe I'll feel that. But I'm not going to see any progress differences in the first couple of weeks doing this. You're not going to see any progress differences just starting out lifting in the first couple of weeks. Apart from maybe, you know, you won't be as sore as your first lift. It takes time for this shit to go down. You know? So I guess what I'm really trying to say is... uh Try to improve your shit, but don't jump the gun on, you know, you know, bailing ship on whatever routine you've been doing. Right. For the real beginner, I say just find a big dude in your gym, potentially uh, your buddy, or if you don't have any friends that lift, I don't know, just go in there and ask a big dude. Honestly, they've got they've got some good information. Somehow they did it, so they know a little bit of shit. You could probably learn. You can, uh, you can go up to them and try to extract some knowledge from you. Now, if they're too, uh, if they're too intimidating, maybe start with a smaller guy. <laughs> you know, I know there is a bit of an intimidation factor to going up to fucking the legit beefcake of your gym. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm sure they wouldn't mind telling you a little tip or two. Especially if you kind of ask a little bit of a smart question. Like, oh, dude, I was talking to one, like, any time... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a fucking, I feel so obsessive. You know, I could talk about just all sorts of different styles of training and different exercises and whatever for, you know, fucking hours. I mean, if I meet like a new gym dude or a new whatever and we start talking about some shit, he's like, yeah, man, dude, I, I love the overhead tricep machine. Oh, I tried one at this one gym, you know, fast forward two hours and then we're still talking about macros and whatever. There's a lot of shit going on. So, again, rooting back to the beginning, the early lifter, 
you know, you'll be able to talk about all that shit. It just uh, just kind of comes with experience. But I think enough of this little experience, routine, ramble, whatever. As long as you go hard, you do some legit working sets, you know, you push yourself, and you finish with a pump, then I think you did something right. At the end of the day, that is those are probably the key components of muscle growth. Hard sets, end with a pump, eat your protein. You are not going to be turned the wrong way if you follow those guidelines. So, tomorrow is going to be chest and side delts. So, cardio in the morning, of course. Cardio in the freaking morning, of course. Bulk, cut, maintain. Even if I had a fucking massive injury, knock on wood, I'm still going to do my cardio. Come on. It's just fucking good for you. No, no other way to say it than that. Um, wow, that guy took a long time at the stop sign. This is the intersection where I almost got hit by that one girl. She, like, pulled out. Well, she stopped, but she was getting ready to pull out right in front of me. I, uh, I feel like they could probably add another stop sign. I was riding my bike around here one summer. This was back when I was in high school, so that was just a classic move to do. No fucking car in the summer. You just fucking ride your bike around, go to the public pool. But, you know, I saw somebody get T-boned right there. So maybe the, uh, maybe the, maybe the civil engineers at the city need to do a little something about that. But that's not for me to say. You know, unless somebody spills it and I can't make it to the gym, that's not going to affect the pump, so who cares? So I'm going to get home, eat some kind of something, go to bed with a full belly, and wake up for cardio. So I will freaking see you next time after I finish this turn so I don't freaking crash, goddammit. All right, no, <laughs> no cat as the opening scene. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so in yesterday's video, when I got in the car, I saw my cat just hanging out by the fucking trash cans. <laughs> I didn't even mean to put that in the video. I just accidentally let that, like, slip through. That's kind of funny, though. Little, uh, little Oliver. He's been on the bulk. We got him around what? What would that have been? Uh, February? No, no, what am I talking about? More like May. He was born around May? I, just, I don't remember. He's like six inch... About six-ish months old now, and he went from, what, I guess zero pounds to now, I think about eight. So a little more than a pound per month of growth. That's pretty good. Especially because, I mean, in the first month, well, in that second month, then, he pretty much doubled his weight. So maybe I should, uh, maybe I should look to him for a little bit of, let's just say, um, weight-gaining inspiration. But, uh, so plan today... Had my two classes, really just kind of had to show up. There's lectures, didn't really have to do anything, which is kind of nice. Maybe passively absorb some information, take a little bit of notes. And now I can do what I actually want to do. Chest, side delts, and a, uh, and a touch, just a little touch of calves. Well, actually, I guess not a touch, I'm just going to do calves too. So... Like I was saying in the last video, I'm not just going to do my arbitrary eight sets like I've been doing for a pretty long time. I want to change it up a little bit because I'm kind of curious about a potential new, uh, not new, but just kind of different way to change up the training. So rather than just go for my eight sets for no reason, Apart from the fact that I think that's an amount of volume which is going to stimulate some some muscle growth and or maintenance, depending on if you're in a bulking or in a cutting context. But, you know, I think that that might just be a little bit of a closed-minded way to go about it. Like, I think within, you know, four or five sets up to probably 12, I think that's around maybe the peak of your effective sets, but then again, you got to think back when I was a beginner, first year, year and a half or so, I was doing workouts where every muscle group had 25 total sets of, uh, you know, total working sets. Now those, I think there's a lot more fluff work involved, 
but now if I kind of had to consolidate at least the method which I'm going to try to do for the next, you know, couple weeks or so, it's, you know, do my hard sets, and then once I feel like I've, you know, systematically fatigued whatever muscle I'm aiming at, today's going to be chest, so if I get done with three sets of incline bench, and then two sets of like, you know, cable press, then maybe I do one set of flies, and I think I'm fully pumped, then I'm just going to call it there. And do not think that I think that the pump is the indicator that the workout is over, or that it was a good workout. Because I could get a good chest pump just by spamming, you know, the pec deck. I could just sit there with really light weight for probably half an hour, and then I could get a pretty good chest pump. I could get, you know, pretty swollen, a lot of blood flow in the area. But that's not enough stimulus for muscle growth. At least I don't think so. You know, I need some heavy shit too, like bench and, you know, other kind of pressing movements. So it's a little bit subjective, but I'm still going to be in the basic realm of sets. Oh my God, this girl needs to drive. Of what I would do anyway, you know. Like, I've had chest days where I've gotten to set six, and honestly, the only reason that I even did two more sets was just kind of because, you know, I had that in my mind beforehand. Even though it's set six, I feel like I was fully pumped. But, you know, if you're doing around eight, eight, little more, a little less, maybe even not that specific. If you've been lifting for a little bit of time, you've been making gains, you do your sets hard, progressive overload, and you lift through the pump, you know, that's good. All right, I'm really trying to get into the nitty grittiness of trying to well, I guess optimize my training. <laughs> I know that's silly coming from me, from uh, all the TikToks that have been, you know, goofing around. I feel like the TikTok at this point is almost, <laughs> almost purely ironic, but they're kind of fun to make. But enough of, enough of that little chat. So I'm gonna get warm, do some shoulder like warm ups, some rotator cuff stuff. Tricep pushdowns light just to get my triceps warm, you know, work my front delts a little bit, do some chest activation with the cable by kind of pressing the cable across my body like that. And then once I feel like my whole little arm, shoulder, chest, maybe I'll do a little bit of cable rows too because you, know, you want to have a solid base to press off of on the bench or, you know, whatever else. So once I feel like I'm totally warm, I'll get up to, you know, either a rack or a, I don't know, a something. Yeah, well, actually, I don't really have a choice. I kind of have to start with incline barbell. I like it, but I would prefer the option of doing, like, Smith or dumbbell. But I'll get there. A plate, a couple of reps, two plates for a couple, three. And then based on that three-rep warm-up, or three-plate warm-up, I'll kind of decide how heavy I want to go. Right. And one thing, too, which I am trying to focus on even more, which honestly I've kind of always been focused on, but I really want to make sure I keep pushing it, is to make sure that every set I'm really pushing it to the limit. Because if I'm not going to have a ton of sets, you know, if I'm not going to do my normal eight, and instead I'm only going to cut it down to, you know, potentially the five range, I got to make sure these sets are fucking crazy. You know, I felt pretty good after yesterday's leg day, even with only four sets for quads. That set of squats... That is the intensity that I want to be able to bring to almost fucking every set. So if I can keep these pumping out like that, I think I am setting myself up for success. So let's find somewhere to park and uh, get started. All right, scratch that. No grocery chip for you. But I did re get a little re-up, a little resupply on Krispy Kreme donuts, four ribeyes, a couple sweets, like some gummy worms and shit, two half gallons of chocolate milk, some bagels, blueberry of course, some cream cheese, some raisin cinnamon bread, the likes of which I'm gonna just douse in butter as with a, you know, as toast. And then one thing that I really needed for a little while was fucking avocado toast. No, no, what am I saying? Avocado oil. There we go. Because with the steaks, 
it's pretty easy to make a good ribeye if you're not concerned with the calories in it. Just because if I throw a ton of avocado oil into a pan, a couple minutes aside, then it's perfect. But I ran out of avocado oil at the house, so I've been using olive oil, and I've just been smoking up the living room, or the kitchen slash the living room. Like, I've had to open up the window and, like, blow air in and out. That sucks. Right? For, uh, I'd say, general rule for steaks, not even general rule, like, you're going to want to use avocado oil or any kind of oil with a higher smoke point. Olive oil is a little bit too, um, well, it's just got a lower smoke point. Nothing else to say other than that. But yeah, chest feels pretty fucking fatigued. My shoulders were burning, even after just a couple of sets, like just four sets of those lateral raises. They were really fucking pumped up. I think they kind of just hit their peak carb fullness or whatever, because like... I could, even just standing here naturally. Holy <sighs> oh, God, flexing without doing anything. They were just like on fire. Which, good sign. So, tomorrow's going to be back in rear delts. I didn't end up doing calves after side delts. I could still kind of feel them from yesterday's leg day. So, calves, I do think you should hit as often as, you know, maintainable. But what I kind of mean by that is hit them as often as they're not sore. So let's say you finish your lift. You can tell that your calves aren't sore. You know, what do you think you should do? You should probably freaking bust out a couple sets. The topic of whether or not calves are genetic, you know, there's some anomalies. At the crazy range, some people have some pretty freaking rough calves. But for the most part, it's just like any other muscle. you got to hit it. If you want to grow it, man, come on, let's get a, let's not lose sight of these basic fundamental principles of training, you know? So, what else do I even have to say? Cardio in the morning, 30 minutes. Um, dieting? So how about this, yeah. When I'm dieting down, right, when I'm trying to cut down, I will do fasted cardio. Just because I don't really want to eat a ton of food as soon as I wake up, you know? I've only got so many calories in the day. And for me to go in and do my cardio and then come back and then like shower and everything else, it just kind of delays the start time for me to eat. And then I kind of get to eat uh, bigger meals more frequently, you know? If I have 500 calories for breakfast before I do go to my cardio, I'll probably be hungry right after the cardio too and then I'll have another 500 calorie meal. And then before I know it, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning and I've got only 1,500 calories left for the whole day. So, I don't really fast, but when I'm cutting down, I do try to make sure my meals are more so towards probably around noon and later. Probably around noon and later. Just so I can go to bed after eating a big meal, you know? Because the last thing you want to do in a dieting context is go to bed hungry. I mean, you're just asking to fucking cheat on your uh, cheat on your calorie deficit. But now that I'm trying to bulk up, I'm still doing my my daily cardio. But I am gonna eat beforehand, just because as soon as I wake up, I gotta get some food in my system. You know, I need to I need to eat something. I need to put a dent into my you know, what's gonna end up being like a five-ish thousand calorie day. So if you have a relatively big breakfast, let's say even a thousand calories, you know, that's like a, a 20% of the way done and it's only 8 o'clock in the morning. So, not only do I change the actual macros and the type of foods depending on whether I'm trying to gain weight or lose weight, I also change the timing to make it just more conducive to actually getting all the food in. Because for me, the only thing... <sighs> Oh my god. The only thing that's going to stop me from gaining weight on this bulk is whether or not I stop eating in a calorie surplus. So, you know, I want to make it as easy as possible for me to get these calories in every day on a consistent basis. But I think we're getting towards the end of the initial weight spike. 
right? Because I haven't really gained much muscle as far as this bulk is concerned. So I'm up like 15 pounds from my dieted weight. You know, how the fuck did that happen? You know, it's just all the intramuscular little uh, gas tanks I've been saying of carbs and water is now full. And on the cut, you know, they're empty. So I'd say once I get to up about, I think it'll probably peak out around maybe 247, 248. And then instead of this quick spike over these first two weeks, it's going to transition into a slow, progressive growth. So if that starts to plateau a little bit, then you know that's going to be a cue that I'm going to have to eat more food, which the same thing is going to apply to you. If you know somebody who has been saying, like, oh, dude, I eat so much, but I can't gain any weight. I, I eat so much, though. You know, I guess I have a fast metabolism. I just burn it off. No, not exactly. I would go so far as to call that just being misinformed, but it could potentially borderline delusion. You know, the only thing that's going to make that scale go up, I don't care if you train with half your intensity or with twice your intensity. Obviously, I want you to train intensely, but what I'm trying to say is you can have an awesome workout routine, but if you don't actually eat in accordance with that, and in accordance with any particular weight goal, either you know gaining or losing, then you're not going to see much physical change. It's the only thing that's holding... I, yeah, food, calories, that's the only thing stopping you from breaking that 200-pound limit. So if you've been kind of on the edge, you've been teetering on whether or not you should bulk up or cut down, I'd say, you know, usually I don't care if it's winter or summer, I'll just bulk or cut whatever's up next but you're not going to be walking around shirtless for the next couple of months may as well just start bulking if you're on the edge about which one you want to do you don't really know at least just pick one at least pick one maybe flip a coin heads you cut tails you bulk and you might not even have to actually listen to what the coin lands on it's just the action of doing that if you're kind of on the edge once you flip the coin in your mind, you're going to realize what side you're hoping for. So maybe subconsciously, you do want to cut down, but you're just not exactly sure that you're uh, that you're ready to pull the trigger on it. I say just download the stupid simple macro tracker and start buying your keto buns and you know zero sugar soda, low sugar barbecue sauce, and get tracking. And then if the inverse is true and you're trying to gain weight and you've been having trouble. Hit your protein, right? solid protein sources, milk, beef, chicken, you know, pretty much animal products. And then to an extent, right? if you can't gain weight with your rice and whatever else, you just got to eat more of whatever's available. Mac and cheese, mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah, that's part of what I just fucking got. Oh, almost crashed a little. Yeah, I just got a little thing of instant... Well, not even instant, but just like already prepared mac and cheese and mashed potatoes. So I honestly might just crack into that as soon as I get home. But I'll have to fucking see. So cardio in the morning, back rear delts later in the evening. Oh my god. I swear, every time I'm fucking driving, cops just pull people over like right behind me. It's giving me anxiety. But yeah, whatever. Train hard tomorrow, do your cardio, you get the drill. So I'll freaking see you next time. Okay, mic is on. Beta alanine tingles are starting to kind of hit me. I forgot to add the beta alanine for the last two lifts in the pre. Oh my goodness, dude, a two day break. Now I'm really fucking feeling it. It's like, it's just kind of a wave of heat kind of tingliness from like the back of my head forward to my face. Which, it's, I mean, it's a little bit annoying, but not that bad, you know. At least I don't have to deal with like, you know, an itchy, uh, you know where. I'm not in the gym reaching around back there scratching at it. But I do kind of get, I get it all in the face, a little bit in the back of the hands. But for some potential extra endurance mid-set, Get an extra couple of reps out. Worth it to me. Worth it to freaking me. I kind of matched the fucking 
pre-workout today. <laughs> I uh, it was two scoops of the Roaring Grape Bloodshot, and then one scoop of the Bubblegum Grape Hostility. I'm fucking, I'm purpled out. I'm purpled out right now. But plan for back and rear delts. I'm gonna keep following the method of kind of doing the workout until satisfaction. So I don't just. I'm not just going to get a back pump and then say, okay, I'm pumped, that means I'm done. That's not what's going through my head when I end the workout. You know, I'm kind of thinking to myself, okay, I feel fatigued enough that I think I've really stimulated the muscle. You know, I'm fully pumped, of course, that is does play a little bit of a role. And then, you know, with back, I'm going to make sure I hit my whole back. I'm not just going to do pull downs and just hit my lats. I'm going to do an even mix of pull downs and rows, you know, back and forth a little bit. So I was throwing around a lot of weight on bent over barbell rows in the past. That was usually a staple opener for my back workouts on the last bulk, which I like the movement. I can really load up a lot of weight, throw around well, a lot of weight, have a ton of tension on my traps and lats. Plus it would pretty much start me off to a solid back pump every time. You know, I can't remember the last time I didn't get a good back pump. But kind of following the same logic on why I don't deadlift, I think I'm going to kind of chill out with the bent over barbell rows. Because, sure, it's a really good way to load your back. It's a solid rowing movement. But I feel like the fact that I've got to support myself by way of, you know, flexing my glutes, my hamstrings, my lower back, you know, I think I'm just kind of wasting energy, which I'd rather kind of put into, you know, a more stable row. So chest supported, honestly, I would probably prefer, like if this gym had a like T-bar row, chest supported, you know, where it's kind of 45 degrees, you bend down on the bench and then you take the weight off of that little pin. If this gym had one of those, I would be spamming that. But seated cable rows, I do feel don't tax my whole system, even if it's really heavy, as much as the um, as much as the bent over barbell rows do. So I'm still going to do the seated cable rows, and then pull downs, pull overs. I don't really need to do any shrugs, just because my traps are developed enough. You know, I used to do shrugs a ton, pretty much every back day. Either, well, even though you can do it in different ways, I feel like. At the end of the day, you're just doing shrugs. So if you're doing it with a dumbbell or a barbell or barbell behind the back or cable or whatever, it's still a shrug, man. Your traps don't know if you're doing it with a bar or with a dumbbell. All they know is they're getting flexed and they get a lot of tension on them. So with some muscles, you know, I bring this up a lot. There's not a lot of ways to hit them. So there's no need to hit them in a lot of ways. Side delts, I don't mind doing a whole workout of just one Side delt exercise, be it dumbbell lateral raise or machine lateral raise. Calves, all I do is calf raises, you know? Either seated or on a calf machine, like standing or in a leg press. Because what's your calf doing? It just goes from, well, pretend this is my foot. It just goes from here to here, right? It's not that complicated. So same logic with back, even though I am going to do lat, you know, pull down style movements as well as rowing style movements. Let's say I do some, you know, lat pull downs and I like the way they feel. I'll just use one handle, three sets, and then maybe I move on to the uh, the seated row. Just do three sets there. You know, if I feel like I'm fully pumped, plus I pretty much hit the whole back, I might just call it. So, I think that's the basic plan for once I get in there. I uh, the gym is only like a minute away from my house. I'm just kind of taking a roundabout way, but. I'm stuck in some kind of traffic. There's a cop up there. Yeesh. So let's just get started. Let's see what the first working set is going to be. All right. We are freaking done. I actually spent a while in there chatting, hooping. What was that? One for five? 20%? Not incredible, but whatever. Not like that's going to affect my back, rear delt, and calf pump. So 
Now I just get to go home and eat. Changing up the diet a little bit. Changing up the diet. Instead of getting my typical, you know, six assorted Krispy Kreme donuts, they've got some sort of seasonal ones. So pumpkin and like kind of apple pie style. It's kind of cool. Quickly digestible carbs in my eyes. As well as uh, I've got I've got half of a ribeye that I had earlier, and then I'm probably gonna make another one in a little bit. I do think that uh, you know leaning towards red meat is not your worst bet. That's what I'm beginning to believe. Red meats or uh, ground beef, some steaks, plus some eggs with the yolks, of course, omega threes. I think the omega threes legit, man. I've been doing a ton of fish oil too in the morning, like freaking eight capsules worth. Maybe it'd be better to spread it out throughout the day, but whatever. So that's probably the plan for the post-workout meal, some steak and donuts. And then I am thirsty. I didn't, even even my whole jug with some Silo 9 today was not enough. I need to fill that thing up. So I'll probably have the steak, the donuts. I'll, I'll definitely make some rice, too. I am going to need some more carbs. But I'm going to probably have a liter or two of water at the same time. I'm thirsty. You, know, you gotta remember all these carbs and proteins and everything else in your blood it's got to get siphoned around with water you know you want to be properly hydrated you need to be a machine that is uh full of fluids and electrolytes to make sure everything is moving around properly plus one uh, apart from just general you know performance benefits you're just gonna feel better when you're fully hydrated man and i'm talking about water with electrolytes as well I couldn't tell you the last time I had a headache. Actually, I could, I could tell you the last time I had a headache. It was like two days ago because I didn't drink enough fucking water and I didn't have a little electrolyte mix combined with it. I woke up and I was like, oh, I kind of feel like oh, my head hurts a little bit. What's going on here? Boom. Dehydrated. Immediate it cause and effect. So, sure, it's a little, uh, oh my God, I almost hit this guy. Sure, it could be a little cheesy to be walking around with your gallon jug, at least in other people's eyes. But who gives a fuck what they think, man? You gotta stay hydrated. You gotta make sure you got enough fluids in your system to contribute to a freaky-ass pump later on in the day. And if walking around with an empty, you know, whole milk gallon jug is how you gotta do it, then that's how you gotta do it. But, yeah, probably go home, eat that. It's nine o'clock. It feels like it's midnight. I think I'm getting hit with the uh, um, with a daylight savings effect. <sighs> it feels much later than it is right now, which is uh, kind of interesting. But whatever, what freaking ever. So tomorrow's gonna be arms. Depending on how I feel, I'll throw biceps in again. I can tell the right one is just slightly tweaked, and I don't want to do anything to uh, perpetuate some kind of tear. Because the last thing you want to do if you're hurt is to just try to keep pushing through it, and then instead of making progress, you're just increasing the severity of that injury. And then after a while, you're gonna have to say, "All right, holy shit, I'm really fucked now." You know, I uh, oh, this always fucking gets me going. I'll, I'll if you go to the same gym around the same time on a consistent basis you're gonna make you know you're gonna end up being chummy with everybody that's around there so I'll see dudes all the time and I know like all right this guy's always talking about his hurt rotator cuff and I'm like dude hey what are you hitting man what are you busting at he's like oh I got some chest but dude my shoulder <sighs> dude my fucking shoulder hurts every time I bench and I'm watching him fucking set up a bench on a rack and I'm looking at him like all right what are you freaking doing what are you doing, man? Come on. You know, just silly. So, As much as you do want to, you know, push through it, you've got to have the presence of mind to really analyze your own situation and say, okay, pump the brakes a little bit. I'm just going to end up getting fucking hurt, you know. I always talk about some shit like, or I mean, I've said this before, like I'd rather get hurt from training hard than not get hurt from, you know, training soft which to an extent I do kind of believe that like I want to train as hard really the notion that I'm trying to get at with that little phrase is 
just make sure you really push it. But obviously, I don't want to fucking get hurt. That's stupid. <laughs> that's fucking stupid. You know, that's just going to interrupt my training, and that will affect the pump. Right? That fits the criteria of something that is going to affect my pumps. So that pings my radar loud AF, and I go, holy shit. All right, I better, I better take some action. I better make a smart move here instead of, you know, getting hurt worse. And then turning, you know, maybe a couple week tweak into a lifelong fucking situation. I mean, I know your dad complains about his shoulder all the fucking time, or he has some shoulder injuries. Do you really think that's just from... And, and also, let's couple that with, like, he, he's been lifting. Or he at least lifted for a while when he was younger. You really think that's just because that's what happens? I'm a little bit more inclined to believe that he uh, probably fucking did some shit that hurt his shoulder. And then instead of stopping, doing his rotator rehabilitative work with maybe some bands or some light dumbbells or some cables. You know, a little, uh, a little side note. Anytime my rotator cuff gets crunchy... Which it has, it has happened before, especially when I bench with a very wide uh, stance and I flare my elbows out too much. I've been good about that recently, so my shoulders have been good. But it has happened before, and it's put me out of benching because every rep is like, it's fucked. But every time I've done that, right, I don't bench or I don't do anything that hurts it anymore. I'll still try to do some chest activations with cable press or you know pec dex or just something. I'll do something that lets me stimulate whatever muscle is impeded, but that doesn't hurt it, of course. And then every time that that's happened, when I you know, do my little face pulls, with light with a cable and a D-handle, and then some rotator stuff like this, or with a dumbbell or even a band, whatever, every time I've done that for a while, it has done me good. It has freaking done me good. I mean, that's my warm-up now, every chest day. So, starting to think that... uh that is not the worst method to go about, I don't want to say bulletproofing, but strengthening your whole shoulder situation, your whole shoulder anatomy. But uh, yeah, so I'm sure that, you know, he fucking kept doing something that hurt, pushing through it, and now looking back, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Probably shouldn't have done that. So train as hard as you can. But if whatever circumstance you do happen to get some kind of tweak, don't fucking make it worse. Don't be a fool. You know, back off a little bit. You're not a chump for backing off if you know you're fucking hurting yourself. Because that's just, you're just interfering with your own gains. And that's just your ego that kind of wants immediate satisfaction. Like, I'm not injured. I'm just, I'm just going to keep pushing through it. This isn't going to stop me. Right? That's the mentality in your mind. But, you know, that's just not the best way to go about it. You got to have a little more, uh, you got to be a little bit more enlightened and know, all right, all right, the next couple of months I'll be back to normal, but got to back off this, that, or the other for now. Always the best move. Always the freaking the best move. So, I don't know what I was planning on talking about, but it turned into a little bit of an injury rant. So tomorrow, cardio in the morning, of course, and then arms, tries, buys, potentially, as well as forearms. Calves today was pretty good. I did some leg, not some, I always say, I did some calf raises on the leg press to start. A couple single leg, couple double leg, and then I went to the seated calf machine with, with the, you know, the plate loaded. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, the plate loaded one for a couple, so I think I did five sets for calves. And after those five, I thought to myself, all right, fully pumped, feel pretty stimulated. That's freaking roll. So, yeah, that's about all I got. So this morning's weight was uh, 245. So we'll see how that changes over the next couple of days. But I think that's just about my fully carved up weight. So... Obviously, the starting weight technically for the bulk was like 230, but there's a you know a weekish, two-ish week spike in weight, getting up to my fed state from you know my flattened, depleted, dieted state. So really, I'd almost say that the start of the bulk's weight is about probably 245, 
and then uh, we'll just have to freaking see where it goes from there. We've got a couple of solid months. I just gotta make sure I keep my fridge full and uh, the stove cooking. And I think that is all I freaking got. So, if you're doing your cardio now, you're a baller. If you're not doing it, then I, you know how I feel about that. So, get a good lift, get a good pump. Pretty classic advice. Pretty freaking classic advice from uh, from your friend Sam. So I'm freaking. See you next time, player. All right. So I nearly made a bit of a freaking blunder today. Basic premise of how the day went was wake up too late to do my cardio before class. So instead of doing my normal, you know, eight, maybe nine ish o'clock cardio, that turned into two o'clock cardio. So not morning cardio, but still a pretty solid amount of time pre lift. I'd say I'd want at least maybe three, three ish at the low end hours between my cardio and my actual lift. You know, because after I do my 30 minutes, let's say I have a pretty big meal, maybe even two ish. Plus a nap, plus drink a ton of water. Should feel pretty much recovered and ready to actually go hit whatever I'm about to. But whatever. So class, cardio like three-ish. Oh, a little bit of extra studying. And then, <gasps> accidentally took a nap. So, you know, I got pretty much done with all my stuff at like seven. And I was like, alright, gym closes at eleven. I'll go at eh, about 8 or so. So, fall asleep, wake up at 9, and I'm like, holy shit, I gotta freaking go. It's, uh, if you lift for long enough, then eventually, I guess this isn't a guarantee, but I guess just from my experience, I've had moments where I've kind of accidentally slept during the time which I was gonna, you know, go lift. And if it's if you put your lift off late enough, then you could potentially sleep through the whole fucking thing. So I wouldn't actually have been screwed if, you know, let's say I woke up from that nap at like 1030. Because I could just go to another gym that I've got a membership for, which is 24 hour. So I guess there's not, it's not necessary to have multiple gym memberships. But for the most part, it's... Uh, it's kind of a balancing act of different, you know, I guess let's just say features of different gyms, you know. I've kind of found that the coolest gyms are not usually 24-hour. Or, you know, sometimes they're further away, and, you know, whatever. Some gyms have better leg equipment, and then some's, you know, some don't have any bicep equipment. Like, you know, if your gym hits every notch of everything perfectly for you, badass. But for me, I end up having a couple, and I just sort of splice through them. But, yeah, so even if I did sleep through it, and then, you know, the, the uh, this gym that I'm about to go to was closed, I'd just go to another one. So, I would go to another one and do freaking arms. What is it? It's already been like three minutes. I haven't said shit about arms. So, basic, my basic plan, my freaking game plan is going to be triceps first. I'm thinking... I don't really know what I'm thinking. I'll have to see what's opened. You know, perhaps some light, really uh, squeeze, emphasize sets. Plus, maybe some heavy pushdowns. Maybe try to throw an extra plate or two onto the stack. And then, maybe some dips too. You know, however many sets it takes until I feel like they're you know, adequately fatigued slash pumped. And that'll kind of be my cue to say, alright, triceps are done. Then I'm going to do some buys today. I'll see how they feel. I'm not just going to jump straight up to the 80s. I'll do I'll do more moderate weight. Last thing I want to do is actually uh, you know, retweak it or anything like that. But I'll see how they feel. And then I'll just finish off the forearms. So kind of up to uh, definitely open to new... What I'm really trying to say is I don't have a specific set of exercises and movements and numbers of sets that I'm planning on going in to do. You know, I'll kind of just have to go in there, see how I feel, and then 
I'll just look around and see what jumps out at me. Like if I am walking around the uh, the cables after I finish my little warm up, and I see a specific handle, and I think to myself, "All right, that looks about right. I'll grab that for a couple sets of straight bar pushdowns." That's what it'll do. Or maybe it'll do some single arm. You know, it's like whatever. I don't think it's. I okay. I think for the beginner, right, what you're really trying to focus on is just getting training experience. So you know, just go into the gym, do a good variety of movements for each muscle group. You know, build up the skill of actually doing your sets and getting pumped. But for the advanced lifter, you know, somebody who's been doing this for a pretty long time, they kind of just know what's going to feel good, and they can pretty much dictate their workout based on that. So. If you have only done like 20 chest days, you may, you're probably not going to have that uh, exact, let's just say, sense to pick out specific movements and make your own, you know, lifts. I think that's where, you know, people who just write out pretty basic workout plans, which you could follow, you know, online, or just like you see somebody post on their workout. I think as a beginner, that's when it's going to be most beneficial for you to just copy what everybody else is doing. But as time progresses and you get smarter and more experienced with all this shit, I think you are going to be better off, you know, being able to cater your split, cater your diet, cater your workouts to your own specific needs. And I mean, that just kind of takes time, you know? You don't have to jump straight to being a 100% knowledgeable freaking baller at the gate. So, it, uh... I mean, the fucking same thing with anything. The longer you do it, the better you'll get at it. So, by that logic, if you don't feel incredibly confident about what you're doing in the beginning, who gives a fuck, man? You're doing it. You're better than everybody else sitting at home fucking not getting a lift. So, I think that's pretty much all I gotta say. I'm gonna find somewhere to park, get warm, and we can flash forward to what I assume is going to be a pretty empty gym which I'm totally fine with because honestly when this gym is packed it is not let's just say this is it is not very easy to uh, find open equipment especially you know the cables cables are in high demand and low supply so well, there's 50 hooligans running about over there Potentially got some waiting on your hands. But uh, yeah, enough chatting. Let's just fucking get over there. Alright, so full arm day complete. With biceps. That felt pretty freaking good. Plus forearms. No calves. The gym, uh, I just lifted too late. I did mean to do my freaking daily calves, but, you know, lost track of time, unfortunately. I'll just make sure I hit them tomorrow with legs. You know, calves, I don't have, like, really plugged into the routine but it's really just as often as they're not sore I think your calves need to be hit that's kind of my rule of thumb when it comes to calf training so uh, one thing that I keep meaning to bring up but uh, just keep forgetting about is uh, there's like a really big Sam Sulik Facebook account and a pretty big LinkedIn account uh, that is not me <laughs> You know, all those daily posts where they're saying some random shit. Um, the, uh, the only thing that I'm actually posting is the Instagram, the TikTok with all the goofy ones, and, well, obviously here. Anything that's not, <laughs> anything that's not that, that is not me. I don't know what's going on over there. Maybe I, uh, maybe I need to take action for a fucking, uh, you know, impersonating impersonating account but whatever so you know if you're sending heartfelt DMs to <laughs> the Facebook I tell you what I'm not getting them don't uh don't be fooled maybe I'll uh maybe I'll put that in, in the description I'll say some shit like that just cause I don't uh he get it. that's just fucking weird but yeah back to what actually matters yeah, tries felt pretty good I do love doing that overhead dumbbell the single arm overhead dumbbell I don't know why I wasn't doing it for a while I think I did it once like maybe a couple of months ago and I just didn't really like it so in my mind that kind of like locked my perception of the movement like oh I don't really like that 
where, I mean, just from one day of doing it, like what, maybe two or so weeks ago, I was like, oh shit, this actually feels pretty good. You know, so if you haven't done, let's say you haven't been barbell squatting because last time you squatted, it kind of left a bad taste in your mouth. Or maybe you haven't been doing, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever exercise and you haven't done it for a while, you know, things change. So it might feel what may have felt kind of weird and funky before may feel good now. You know, don't, uh, don't limit your gains by limiting your exercise selection. You know, I want to hit everything as hard and intensely and, man, fuck it, as optimally as I can. So by having a very wide array of movements at my disposal to choose from, that's going to let you do that. You, know, you don't want to just sit here and you know, do your workouts, which are you know, essentially like just coming in and twiddling your thumbs and not really making any progress. So plan for now is go home, finish off a, uh, the rest of a ribeye that I cooked earlier with some mashed potatoes. And then I don't know what else. I do not freaking know what else. So, so far I'm at 4,000 calories for the day. Uh, I got some chocolate milk. Maybe I'll break into that. That could easily be another 1,000 calories. Just four cups there. And, you know, I'll see what else. A lot of red meat, protein, steaks, ground beef, as well as a lot of egg whites. That's pretty much what I've been slamming. And then, you know, carbs. Carbs are from a variety of sources. I'd say right now they consist primarily of, uh, Ben's instant rice, some like pre-made mashed potato packets, like the sort of family size type deals. Um, sweets, treats, as well as, uh, oh yeah, huh. I don't know, I've got a bunch of ramen at the house. I don't know why I haven't been doing it. Hmm. And whatever. As far as I'm concerned, right, eat what you gotta eat to change the scale. Because if you can't do that, you know, you gotta, you gotta remember, the whole point of dieting, the whole point of training is not to go about it in a certain way, it's to get specific results. So if you're not getting results, then whatever you're doing just clearly is not working. So you, know, you could do something unconventional, but hey man, if you're doing a fucking unconventional bicep workout and you've got some fucking baseballs in between your forearm and your shoulder, then guess what? You're getting the fucking results. So, you know, who cares how you got them if you got them? But I think that's pretty much all I gotta say, man. I, I can't think of anything else. Cardio in the morning. Oh yeah, I got a I got a 94 on that econ exam. Honestly, I was hoping for a hundred. I don't know where I missed points, but that's pretty good. That's pretty good for me, especially. I kind of feel like I'm a little bit of a slacker. Not when it comes to lifting, but, you know, anything else, <laughs> I feel almost gets put on the back burner in a sense. But, yeah, I'm going to go eat my food, get a good-ass night's rest, cardio in the morning, and then legs tomorrow. i got to get hyped up. Not for hamstrings. It is not very difficult for me to have a really good hamstring lift, like to really push hamstring sets to failure. But... Squats to failure, that requires my full attention. That requires my full attention and 100% effort. Because it's not hard to stand up from like set, um, uh, no, no, no. It's not hard to stand up on rep number 12 and then think to yourself, okay, let's just re-rack it. Oh, oh, let's just re-rack it, this is, this is getting hard. It's not hard to think that. So, honestly, I kind of, with squats, I mean, I think I really only want to do them to failure. You know, I feel like I really want to push it like that. The only thing that sucks is when you do squats to failure, you've got to re-rack the weight. Unless you get some spotters to help you up, but I don't like spotters on squats. I, uh, the squat is a pretty, it's a pretty fucking, in the grand scheme of movements, it's pretty fucking dangerous, man. Hundreds upon hundreds of pounds on your back. You're standing out in the open air. The last thing I want is some fucking dude behind me, like, pushing me off balance, trying to help me. And then, like, I pull my something or, like, no. When I squat, I like just me, the rack, and the safeties. And I want the safeties to be 
just oh some deer walking around now so I want the safeties to be like two three inches below my normal squat depth because when I reach failure on squats I do not want that to be an abrupt moment like I do not want to fucking have to shoot out in the front of the squat or like dump the weight and slam it I've done it before it's no fun like if your safeties are too low then it's they're really not doing that much for you I love finishing a squat and if I hit failure just kind of going back down into the lowered position and just kind of sinking down a couple more inches and then having a safety to grab it for him. I think that is approaching, you know, the safest way to squat. It's, oh, oof. Unreal, I mean, kind of related, but also kind of unrelated. I do not understand the lack of safeties on powerlifting squats. Like, you know, those guys, 800 pounds, and you just want to trust, like, you know, five dudes standing next to you? I don't know, man. I want the fucking safeties. I want some safeties, man. That's... <sighs> Squat injury clips do not... They give me the heebie-jeebies, i tell you what. So, now I think I've pretty much said my piece. So, home, food, forgot to take my vitamins this morning. Uh... That's it. I brought all my... I brought a big ass load of dirty laundry home cleaned it folded it but now I've just got like two bins of laundry that are clean but I have to put them away maybe I'll do that I don't know in, in my current circumstances that feels like a problem for tomorrow Sam not for tonight Sam so I think that is about freaking it so a little bit uh last thing Last fucking thing. If you're getting ready for your leg day tomorrow, let's say you've got legs tomorrow, and you, uh, let's say you've been squatting. If you haven't been squatting, I say just try squatting, but if you've been squatting for a while, I, uh, I'm going to give you a personal challenge to do a set of squats to legitimate failure. Right. Curls to failure, whatever. Hamstring curls to failure, leg extensions to failure, right? They're hard. But a set of squats... To failure, that is a fucking challenge. So, uh, yeah, do with that what you will. But I'm out. I'll freaking see you next time.